Um, now you mentioned Linda Martell before. And, and, mm-hmm. and that she was a massive kind of groundbreaking influence on country music. And you've talked about her frequently. I've seen some of the other interviews. W- w- tell us a little bit more about her story, because there's a lot of people who don't, who don't know it as much as they should, it seems. Yeah. Well, she's, I mean, it's not a story that I knew until I was like deep in my career. Um, Linda Martell came out in 1969 she was on a record label called Plantation Records, which was the same record label that released uh, Jeannie C. Riley, uh, Harper Valley PTA. Um, Shelby Singleton was the producer and owner of this record company. And his whole thing was like shock value things. So that was partially why we put the black art. He had several subsidiary labels, but that's why he chose to put the black artist out on Plantation Records because shock value. Um and she released the album Color Me Country, which is why my show is named Color Me Country. And it was 50 years ago, released last year. Um, anyway, she is the highest charting Black female on the country charts to this day. Um, and that was with the song Color Him Father in 1968. And they released three singles for her. Um, she played the Grand Ole Opry. She was on Hee Haw. She did all the Lawrence Welk, like she did all the big shows of the time. And she's a fantastic singer, great performer, all of that. And it just, after the first single, nothing else um, stuck. And there's a lot of different theories as to why it didn't work. Um, But she was meant to be the counterpart to Charlie Pride, since Charlie Pride came out at the same time. And um, so after the third single, they decided to just end it and move on and do something else. And she went on to record a whole new project that ended up being shelved and um, was told, you know, you can't be recording if we're not sanctioning you recording. And if you do, we're just not going to work with you. So she was effectively blacklisted from the business. She left Nashville. She moved to South Carolina, went by her original name, her birth name, her given name, and um, raised children, drove a school bus for a while. She still performed around town and that sort of thing. And she's like a local celebrity there. People love her. And she never came back to Nashville again. And, um, And now they're working, her family is working on a documentary about her life right now. Let me ask you this. What do we do now to help try to avoid some of these mistakes of the past? That's a great question. And I think that's number one. That's the first step is asking those questions. Or how do we fix this? Okay. So I wish that I had like this, this amazing, answer, but I think it, it's as simple as support and visibility. Because if you're not supported, if you're not seen, like correlating to the answer I gave you earlier, like I, the only reason, one of the biggest reasons I was so visible is because I had money and push behind me. And so, you know, that's part of the reason why I started the Color Me Country Artist Grant Fund um, to give grants to artists so that they can finish that project or they can hire PR or they can do all these things. And another reason why I started the show. So you have a place to play your music, but As fans, as people that don't have shows, people that don't have funds, people that are just at home, go see them when they're in your town. Visit their website. Go to their social media. See where they're playing. Go support them. Stream the music. The more streams, the more visits, the more saves that an artist has, then Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon Music take notice and they start adding them to editorial playlists. That's what happened to me. And so the more editorial playlists you're on, the more streams you have and the more visible you are. Um, Buy the merch. Like I know nobody, I know people aren't really buying CDs anymore, but like if you just get a t-shirt, get a bumper sticker, get something like just, those are the ways that you can support um, an independent artist, these artists of color. If you really want to see them, then that's what you do. You go out, you tell people about it. You share it on your social media. You call your radio station and badger them. They're probably not going to play it because they have a playlist, but at least they know that those artists exist and they're out there. Now, the era of streaming music has has obviously changed the industry. 
and and uh, I guess my question is one are you a fan of it and two do you feel that it might be a game changer for some of the marginalized voices who don't have that money to back to to back them streaming yes absolutely I mean uh, there's a young woman I'm going to use her as an example um her name is Camille Parker she was one of my artists that I chose as the class of 2021 this year she just put out a song in, I want to say, March, either March or February. And she has already gotten up to a million streams. She's doing this all herself. But because of those million streams, there are opportunities opening up to Camille that she would never have happened for her without having shown and proven that yes my music people like it clearly a million people have streamed this so yeah it matters like it may not change someone's life financially because streaming numbers suck <laughs> to be quite frank but it does take people take notice with the amount of streams it's like the amount of views on youtube or the amount of friends or likes that you have yeah um so what do we, what do you have coming up in the future talk to us I'm working on a new project myself. Um, I'm hoping to have it out by the end of the year. Fingers crossed. Good little wheeling and the creek don't rise. But um, other than that, I'm I'm working on the second season of the show. Um, we've got some really, really great people that have wanted to be on the show, which always blows my mind. But yeah, it, we're working on second season. Um, I'm working on another project with another host, uh, Kelly McCartney, who is my partner in the artist funds, we're going to do a show, an actual podcast together um, about activism in the arts. And I'm very excited about that. And there'll be more information about that soon. And, you know, raising my babies and, um, and just enjoying being out and around people, lots of hugging. Oh, I see yeah. lots of hugging in my future. Absolutely. <laughs> so, so where can um, our audience go to to uh, find your music, listen to your music, follow you on social media, follow your various projects? Sure. Well, you can go. The nucleus is uh, ReeseePalmerMusic.com. That's R I S S I PalmerMusic.com. And you can find a link to the grant fund to Color Me Country, which has its own website and all the little stuff that I'm working on right now. Reese, thank you so much for being on the show. It's, it's just been a real enjoyable pleasure. Same. You're awesome. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it.